Okay. We will be discussing chapter 12, diversity of life and how they are classified today. So if you look at this bee and a uh, echinacea flower, they couldn't look more different, but they're nonetheless related as all things are uh, on earth, but all living things are. And the scientists study the uh, similarities and differences among tremendously uh, diverse creatures in certain ways, certain systematic ways. And that's what we're gonna discuss. And one way to study the diversity is to see how organisms are related by constructing a, a phylogenetic tree. And a phylogenetic tree is shown here. Start with a uh, single species and follow backwards. So green filamentous bacteria here, if you follow this backwards, you see it branched off from Thermotoga, who branched off of Aquifex. So it suggests that uh, evolutionary relationship exists between species and or a group of species. Delta and Omicron, where have we heard that term? Heard, the, heard, the, heard those number uh, variants. SARS-CoV-2. Why are there variants of SARS-CoV-2? Because they're evolving, they're changing. And SARS-CoV-2 relationships between uh, subspecies or variants rather, can also be studied using phylogenetic trees. And the study of organisms with the uh, purpose of driving their relationship is called the systematics. And typically things like fossils, morphology, DNA, protein sequences are used to phylogeny, used in phylogeny. And they're updated constantly. These are constantly changing. And the taxonomy, how do we, uh, well, how do we uh, classify using different levels? Well, that is called the, called the taxonomy. That is the naming, science of naming and grouping the spe species to, uh, to create a shared classification system. And that system is called the Linnean system, named after Carl Linnaeus, who invented it. It's a hierarchical system with each group at one level, including the groups at lower level. In other words, domain contains all levels. Kingdom comes next. Kingdoms contain all phylum. Phylum contain all class. Then order, family, genus, and species. And the lower levels are more specific with species being the most specific. And Note, early taxonomic classification can be wrong as seen with archaea and bacteria who were initially thought to be just prokaryotes. And they were split after seeing the DNA differences. At each sub-level, organisms become more similar. So dogs and wolves are same species because they can breed and make viable offspring, but they are different, eno different enough to be considered subspecies. And the lowest level is obviously the most specific. So how do you classify using uh, phylogenetic trees? Phylogenetic trees show the relatedness among organisms. It's a, it's a, it's a, a hypothesis because obviously you cannot go back through time to confirm the relationships. And the shared characteristics, for instance, DNA similarities, are used to make these trees. And a rooted tree has one branch at the bottom. This is an example of one branch of a rooted tree. And the branch points uh, show the new lineages. This is one branch point here, another branch point. Here's another branch point. Uh, that suggests that Bornean orangutan branched off of Sumat Sumatran orangutan. And the, those branched uh, taxa, two lineages, for instance, the orangutan species, they share a common ancestor, which is what this organism is. And gibbons branched off of the same common ancestor, whatever the common ancestor is. 
So branch with more than two groups show that uh, scientists have not definitively deter determined the relationship that's shown by three mountain gorilla species here. And also, also humans do not, or scientists do not believe humans evolved from uh, chimpanzees, but may have shared a common ancestor. And the branch points imply evolutionary changes. For instance, here, amniotic egg, which is a different way of uh, drawing the tree, separates rabbit and the lizard from frog lineages. Rabbit is here, lizard is here, and the frog is here. And note, frog does not have egg with amnion, whereas rabbit and lizards do. So more closely related organisms do not have to look more alike. They can, but they don't have to. Lizards, rabbits have both amniotic eggs, but salamanders don't. But salamander looks a lot more like lizard than rabbits. And the lengths of these branches do not show the length of time, only shows the order of events. In other words, oldest is down here, and the oldest trait is vertebral column. Invertebrate, lancelet, is still there, but new in, uh, vertebrates showed up at this point. And all these are vertebrates. And how do we determine the evolutionary relationships using, uh, using this method? Organisms that share uh, physical features and DNA sequences tend to be more closely related than those who do not. And there are things, we talked about homologous structures, like which suggest common versions. So wings of a bird, wings of a bat, have may have had common origin because they share <clears throat> the similar bone structures. Foreleg of a horse, flipper of a whale, and human forearms are also homologs. <clears throat> then because the groups of bones appear to be arranged similarly. Um, but some closely related organisms look different by minor genetic changes that causes major morphological differences. Chimpanzees, chimpanzees share 99% of the DNA with humans, but have many anatomical differences or changes. Protruding jaw, length of arms and legs. They have short legs, but long arms. Also, unrelated organisms may appear similar due to the common adaptation to the similar environment. I, that is, they can perform the same functions. For example, flight. We said these are the analogous, or I'm sorry, uh, homologous structures, but bees also fly, but bees' wings are different because they, they uh, are different at the level of embryonic origins. So wings on a bee and wings on bats and birds are analogs. They perform the same function, but they have the different origin. And the molecular systematics uses the DNA sequences to do the classification and this has been used in the past for, for correcting many misclassifications. And the more similar the sequences, more closely related the organisms are. Different genes mutate or evolve at different rate. And rapidly evolving sequences are useful for determining the relationships of closely related species. Whereas slower evolving sequences are used to useful for determining the relationship between distant species. A rapidly evolving se sequence, most rapidly evolving sequence is uh, viral sequences, as we have seen with SARS-CoV-2, right? 
and eukarya and archaea are far apart. So in order to study these things, you have to use a gene that had to be present in both from very beginning. For instance, ribosomal RNA, which is used to make proteins. And without that, uh, the organism cannot function. So RNA sequence, ribosomal RNA sequence is used very commonly. So what is the practical application of phylogeny? You use it for evolution and transmission of diseases, as we have seen with SARS-CoV-2, and also with study on origin and uh, spread of MRSA, this multiple resistant, uh, uh, the, the name escapes me, is a germ that is resistant to no, st yeah, multi-drug resistance Staphylococcus aureus. That's what the spread and this spread began with perhaps one single introduction into the new population instead of many, many population, many, many uh, cases in a population. So it is, it's important important to quickly identify the context. We have seen that with COVID nineteen too. And it's also used in conservation biology. Uh, one study recommended that protecting uh, threatened species should consider how evolutionary unique they are rather than just level of ex extinction threat. If, yeah, and that sort of makes sense because it, if, if it is evolutionary unique and if it is, it is at the level of extinction, then it's more important to preserve that rather than uh, a simple bird that whose role can be uh, replaced by many other birds, for instance. So how do you build a, a phylogenetic tree? The most accepted method for uh, constructing phylogenetic tree is the cladistics. Cladistics sort the organisms into clades. Uh, that is group of organisms that are most closely related to each other and their ancestors. So lizards, pet, rabbits, humans are shown to be related to each other under one ancestor with an amniotic egg. So here, here's the amniota. And between amniota, now under amniota, you have lizards, rabbits, and humans. But fish is not an amniota. But fish is a vertebrate, as is lamprey. So they make the single clay, these clays that share the same characteristic of amniotic egg, a monophyletic group. They all have the shared characteristics. And clays must include ancestral species and all descendants from the, uh, from the branch point. So it must include this branch point. So, but the cladistics rests on three assumptions. One, living thing is related by descent from common ancestor, which is a general evolution or general assumption of evolution. Speciations occur by splits of one species into two, only two, never more than two at a time. Traits change enough over time such that one can identify the actual direction of the change. So the amniotic egg is a later character than non-amniotic egg. This is the polarity of the character change. It went from non-amniotic egg to amniotic egg. So cladistic compares in groups. In groups is a taxa being analyzed, and outgroups as taxa that diverged before the, the taxa being analyzed. So the amniotic egg taxa or amniotic egg uh, clay is the taxa that is the in-group, and the non-amniotic egg is the out-group. So 
So by comparing this, uh, the in-group members with each other and to the out-group members, we can determine which characteristic underlies the branch point of the in-groups phylogeny. If, if the characteristic is found in all members of the group, it is called the shared ancestral characteristic. But this is not useful in cladistics because if only some of the organism have the trait, it is called shared drived, not shared ancestral. Shared drive character because this trait changed at some point in descent. So the amniotic egg is the shared drive trait, amniotic, amniotic egg for lizards, rabbits, and humans are shared drive tra trait. But non-amniotic egg is a shared ancestral trait. So choosing, uh, choosing the right uh, relationship, so what do you do with a character shared by all species in a clade except one? For instance, here, C1, C2, C3, all have the same traits, or uh, uh, no, they are, they are a monophyletic group. But if C1 and C2 has a some character, but C2 doesn't, the, the, how do you explain that? This C2 evolved backwards. And what do you do if clade outside your taxa character uh, shares a character? For instance, if D, E1, and E2 also share uh, the character that's seen in C1 and C2, is that an independent evolution? And we use what we call maximum parsimony to resolve these issues, which means that events occurred in most simple and uh, obvious way. The best tree is one with the fewest, fewest character reversal changes. For instance, C, between the C, D, and E, uh, we can we have to uh, create a tree that has the uh, fewest number of reversals, character reversals. And we, we have to use computer programs to search through all possible tree to find the smallest changes. We said phylogenies are used for studying diseases and conservation biology. It's also, uh, I have used in uh, virus, virus evolution research uh, in HCV, we study what is called the quasi species. Quasi, because it's almost, they're almost different species, but not really. <clears throat> and here's a, my own uh, phylogeny tree uh, that's, that shows hepatitis C virus in three different, different infection reservoirs lymph nodes, PBMCs, and found in both. Uh, this is work done back in uh, 1997, 1999, which is ancient history, really. And it looks different because cladogram is displayed as a radial tree. It's a different way of displaying the phylogeny trees. And the sequences we used are from uh, envelope gene and the hypervariable regions. Why would it be hypervariable? Why did we make vaccines using spike protein for SARS-CoV-2? Because that's the region that varies the most. And this is how viruses escape the immune system. You know what? Let's, uh, we'll leave it there. <laughs>